Welcome everybody to our lecture. In this lecture, we are going to study a game of Fisher against Grandmaster Pal Benko. This game shows a good theme of attacking the king and also a good example of how to deal with the perk defense as white. So, let's start our lecture. e4, g6, d4, bishop g7, knight c3, developing the knight, and d6. Securing the f6 square for the knight, so f4. This is called the Austrian attack, an aggressive way by white to deal with the perk defense. Knight f6, developing the knight and getting ready to castle kingside. This is the general setup for the perk defense for black with d6, knight f6, and fianchetto of the dark squared bishop. Knight f3, developing the knight. Castle. Bishop d3. This is a good square for the bishop. The bishop on d3 is more active than on e2, although Fischer himself played the move bishop e2 on some occasions. Now black plays bishop g4. With this move, black intends to exchange on f3, as there is no good way to maintain the pin after h3. Bishop h5 just loses a piece to g4, and retreating the bishop to c8, the only good square for the bishop on this diagonal, just loses time for black, but black has some idea in mind. So, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, knight c6, developing the knight and attacking the d4, so, bishop e3 protecting, and e5. This was the idea of playing bishop g4 in the first place. Black wanted to get rid of the knight on f3 to be able to play the move e5, seizing control over the d4 square. So, d takes e5, d takes e5, and f5 by Fischer. Actually, Fischer doesn't want to allow black the move e takes f4, after which the e5 square will be a good post for a knight after the maneuver knight to d7. Let's say that white castles at once. So he allows black the move e takes f4 and after white recaptures with the bishop for example, he plays knight to d7, getting ready to put one of the knights on e5 square with a good position for black. So, Fischer played f5 at once and now black played e takes f5. And this is not the only move for black in this position. He also has the move knight to d4 attacking the queen. Taking on d4 is not a good decision as after this capture, white's dark squares become very weak. So, queen f2, and now black plays e takes f5, forcing white to take with the pawn rather than the queen. Now, b5, black is taking some action on the queen side, and he's getting ready to c5, c4, generating some counter play on the queen side. And actually taking the b pawn is risky, as after knight takes b5, knight takes b5, bishop takes b5, black is allowed the move knight to e4, attacking the queen, 
and after a queen move, like queen f3, black's queen comes to h4 with a check, and actually white is uncomfortable in this position. So, white cannot take the pawn on b5, so he castles. c5 by black, threatening c4 to exchange the bishop on d3, and actually the bishop is an important piece for, for white's attack, so white shouldn't allow this exchange. So here white had the move knight to e4, and after c4, he's not going to retreat the bishop immediately, but first knight takes f6 check, and after queen takes f6, he has secured the e4 square for the bishop, so bishop to e4, attacking the rook, and threatening c3 in the next move. Actually, white has an excellent position. So, all this doesn't happen in the game, and Benko took the pawn on f5 immediately, so g takes f5. Now, how should white recapture the pawn? Actually, if white plays e takes f5, he's giving black some chances for counterplay with the pawn sacrifice e4, after which he can use the e5 square for the knight generating some counterplay. So, Fischer took with the queen, suppressing black's counterplay. Now, black played knight to d4, attacking the queen. And white cannot capture on d4 for the same reason as his dark squares become very weak after this capture. So, white has to move the queen. Here Fischer played the move queen f2, but actually this is nothing wrong with the move queen takes e5. But white must be ready for the queen sacrifice after the discovery knight to g4, attacking the queen and the bishop on e3. So queen takes g7 check, king takes g7, and h takes g4, threatening bishop h6, and actually the computer evaluates this position as equal after h5. But of course, it is not easy to play a move like queen takes e5 over the board. So, Queen f2. Now black played knight to e8. A good move by black. Intending knight to d6 and f5 or c5 c4, generating some counterplay. Here, Fisher castle short. But also, he could castle long in this position. But actually, moving the king to the queen side is not a wise decision. As actually, black is ready to generate sufficient counterplay on this side with knight to d6 and c5, c4. So, Fischer castled short, and the king will be safer in the king side. Now, knight to d6, black is ready to f5, and actually white should have delayed this counter by black with rook a to d1, exploiting the pin to black's pieces to the queen on d5. But Fischer didn't play this move, and played queen g3 instead. 
threatening bishop h6 and allowing black the move f5. This is the move black should have played in this position to challenge white in the center. But actually, Benko didn't play this move and played king h8, preventing bishop h6. Now, white is given another chance to suppress black's counter with f5 with queen g4, which Fischer played in the game. And now, because f5 is not available anymore, the only way for black to generate counterplay is through c5, intending c4 and b5, b4 with a queenside attack. But Benko here played c6. I understand that he wanted to prevent knight d5 by white, but actually after this move he cannot generate any counterplay in this position. Now Fischer played queen h5, and now white's idea is simple. He wants to exchange on d4 and push e5 at the right moment, threatening mate on h7. And black should have played knight to e6, suppressing this idea. But again, Binko didn't play the right move and went for queen e8, intending f5 in the next move to challenge white's queen on h5, but actually he didn't see the move which Fischer played in the game. Now, bishop takes d4, e takes d4, and if white goes for e5 immediately, black simply responds with f5, and actually black's position is okay. But actually here comes the move that Fischer prepared and Benko didn't see in his calculations. Actually now, white to play and wins. Can you find the move which suppresses black's counter with f5 and forces black into a losing position? The move is rook to f6. An excellent move by Fischer. With this move, Black not only doesn't have the f5 resource anymore, but also the knight on d6 is attacked. And actually, there is no move that can save black in this position. Let's see. If black takes the rook on f6, then e5 forces mate with no defense. And the same goes for d takes c3. As after e5, the only defense for the mate is h6. But now white is ready to sacrifice his rook with rook takes h6, forcing mate after that. If king g8, then rook h8 check. Bishop takes h8 forced and queen h7 checkmate. So black cannot take the rook or the knight on c3. Here Binko played king g8, e5 by Fischer, threatening the mate on h7. So h6 is forced, and now many moves win for white. But the most simple and accurate move here is knight to e2. The problem is that the knight on d6 cannot move as this will allow the move queen to f5, forcing the mate on h7. For example, knight to b5, queen f5, and the mate on h7 is undefended. And again, taking the rook on f6 allows queen takes h6 with undefended mate. So actually in this position, Black loses a piece for no compensation, and here Black resigned.
a nice game by Fisher, which involved two important decisions. The first is the move f5, which suppresses black's counter play based on the move e takes f4 and the maneuver knight to d7. And of course, the second one was the excellent rook to f6, which forced black into a losing position. So, I hope that you enjoyed the lecture and see you in the next lecture.